Welcome to the newest episode of TNC at the Movies. So, Chewie, what are we talking about on this newest episode of TNC at the Movies? We're talking about Tom and Jerry 2021. Sick. And the reason mm-hmm. we got to say that because there are actually countless, and I mean countless, uh, Tom and Jerry movies. There are... Wow. Okay, so they have been, they started uh, since 1940, and... Uh, you have gotten a brand new uh, movie. It looks like every uh, every other year in the 40s and 50s, and Whoa. then after that, we had you know one every several years. I remember Tom and Jerry exactly as uh, the Simpsons uh, portray uh, a, a cat and mouse back and forth. It's just a lot of a lot of fun uh, slapstick comedy. Uh, you know, it, some people you could you could consider it violent, uh, but then again, it's no one ever truly got hurt, so you know it's more comedy standard violence, if you will. Uh, but it's still uh, that's that's how I remembered it. There was a lot of mm, how do I say, uh, d- like it would always be it would always be new. It would it would always have a different uh, place every episode. It wasn't always just in. A, uh, in a house or at least that's how i remember it i know there's an episode where they're um all musketeer like yeah but there's like yeah and then they're speaking french and there's a little french speaking uh yeah yeah it's like the i don't house. know like his little brother or his little cousin something oh. like yeah yeah i'm assuming a, a scrappy do to him yeah, yeah so so you know that's how i remember it and uh I liked it and it was always entertaining if it was on, you know, it would usually be on a block though with like Bugs Bunny, Daffy. Kirk. I guess more my memory was it was always on. Like, I don't know that I remembered like, like, like this was a particular day and time, but I remember that it was always, you know, like Constant. a thing that was on. Mm-hmm. You know, and you would watch the Mary episodes and like, I think the best part about it was that and it kind of the movie kind of alludes to it, and we're going to talk about it a little bit because they they never talked. So the the thing that got you you know into it was always just you know more of the action. In this case, it was a lot of you know the the violent action because man, it was always the cat and mouse, and mm-hmm. every time just you know the same the cat you know when you play cat and mouse, it had a uh, very very much fond memories because it was hilarious. Mm-hmm. It was also the best part of the best part of that was also that, um, you know, I don't even know how the canon for something like this would work, but they had many, many crossovers. And even in this show, because they were, it wasn't like, not a lot, not a lot of the things were set. The only constants was you had Tom, you had Jerry, and they mm-hmm. would try, one would try to get the other and Jerry would always try to escape and would generally get the best of them. Like you said, there was an episode where there were musketeers. There was a, mm-hmm. I want to say there was an episode where there was like a little uh, uh, little mouse mermaid. Like there was a lot of episodes <laughs> where, nice. um, you know. It wasn't were, just set in the house. Yeah, it was never just set in the house. Mm-hmm. There was also one, you know, in different time periods. You know, so in that in that regard. Time like, travelers. Yeah, so it was, it was actually quite, it was a space one even, I want to say. There was mm-hmm. one that was, and um, I was kind of skimming through some uh, some of the movie um, uh, art, mm-hmm. and I saw like you know there was a Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. They went to Oz. I mean, Tommy yeah. Jerry has been in a lot of places, and I think um, a lot of WB properties. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, and I like it. So here's what you got. Yeah, and. I want to see those, them meet. I want to see him meet the Matrix, both yeah. of them. And Just those, those, Tom uh, and Jerry. Those Matrix. are the memories there of, uh, of Tom and Jerry. Anyway, we went through all that just to let you know that this movie, Tom and Jerry, <laughs> the movie 2021, is not is not that at all. Um, uh, now, before I continue, uh, I don't want to say I don't want to I don't want to necessarily say like I'm meaning in a negative way. Because mm-hmm. I don't mean that because I have a the brain that sees what things are. And this movie 
is a rom com, mm-hmm. and it's got some Tom and Jerry shorts. Yes, that's, that's well put. That's 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 how I that's how I am interpreting this movie here. Any movie like this, I always immediately compare it to two movies. Everything that I that I speak on this movie will always be compared to two. It would always be compared in a negative way to uh, the Smurfs, and it would always be compared mm-hmm. in a positive way to uh, Space Jam. And I mean Space Jam with Michael Jordan. Uh, Space Jam with LeBron James is uh, to be determined. We will see that later this year in uh, you know TBA or TBD. Hope, hope it's good. TBD, but Space Jam with Michael Jordan. I hope Bill Murray comes back. That would be great. Or 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 do a reverse where it's like Dan Aykroyd and then they go, I didn't know Bill Murray was in this. Bill Murray was in this. That'd, That'd be great. great. That'd be great. I'd get it. So write it for me. Foremost. Yeah. I want everyone to know that I'll be looking at it as the through that lens that this is a rom com. This is a rom com with let's go over uh surprisingly not James Marsden. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, actually, surprisingly, what? you know he's probably busy doing Sonic. Yeah, yeah. All right, so that's okay though. They, they it, it had a pretty okay cast. Yeah, yeah. the uh, the cast uh, involves uh, Chloe Grace Moritz. Is it Moritz? Moritz. Moritz. Chloe Grace Moritz. Yeah. Chloe Grace Moritz. Michael mm-hmm. Pena. Michael mm-hmm. Pena. Love him. Love him. Uh, Tom and Jerry play themselves, and I think that uh, that's actually pretty hilarious. And it's because, well, you know, they don't speak, right? So, uh, of course, they play themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, and you also have um, basically the, I would say, the hidden leading roles of uh, Colin Jost and um, was it uh, Pallavi Pallavi Sharda playing Ben mm-hmm. and Frida. Um, because in the end, this story is about them while somehow being about Chloe's character, Kayla, and they sprinkled in Tom and Jerry. Mm-hmm. So. It's a classic growing up for her. Classic growing story. up where uh, you, have, you have Kayla's character who wants, the job at, wants to get the job at the hotel. Through shady uh, manner, she gets the job at the hotel. <laughs> and that's when you get to uh, Preet and Ben, who are they're just rich, and they want to get married. And you have the classic rom-com stuff where things go wrong. Oh, yeah. And Kayla's got to fix it, and Tom and Jerry are sprinkled in. It's like Dunstan checks... Then made in Manhattan and like oh, I'm out. Oh, no. Tom and Jerry made a movie, guys. Tom and Jerry the movie. It's good stuff though. It's not bad. Directed by uh, Tim Story. He directed some pretty good stuff. Uh, I personally like the Fantastic Four films, all iterations except Fan. I mean, I'm not gonna say except. I'll tolerate Fan Four stick. And by that, I mean the last Fantastic Four movie, the one that they made just so they don't lose the rights, which basically made them lose the rights. Basically. Um, That's like we do that last ditch effort to not lose something, but it just makes you lose it because why did you do that? Yeah, well, because you called her the BITC, you know, word, and then, you know, you slam the door and, well, Juan, why wouldn't you? I'm I'm just kidding. Uh, Anyways, um, yeah, man. Uh, uh, Tim Story does good stuff. Yeah, last movie I really enjoyed by Tim Story was... uh, shaft uh Ooh. which was great all three generations uh it was it was very very comedic yeah, it's it a good way to bring bring some, action uh, bring all that together yeah I'll tell you what me i'm a personal fan of it's actually a tie between barbershop and uh taxi i forget he did uh, barbershop that's right that's right good I stuff was, man barbershop was just barbershop was just a good movie i just i like how that oh worked. overall you know you know what i liked about barbershop it just felt like I got another Friday movie, and I really like that. Like more like yeah. plot wise, you know, not necessarily the interactions between everyone. Just yeah, no, it had wise. a it had a it had a pretty uh, rather simple uh, plot that everyone can relate to. Yet at the end, you had that grow oh, up, especially now, yeah. dude. Especially now, you know, like oh, of course, yeah, for sure, you know. Well, I really uh, enjoyed uh, Chloe Grace. 
uh, her character and Michael Pena's character, you know, being who he, who he is to the story. Not so much, but, you know, character, good character. Uh, played what he had to, you know, played how he had to play it. Same with Chloe. She, I think she, I think uh, probably her and Tim were like, hey, just have fun. Yeah, play the character how you would, you know, be, just be yourself. I think he said, I believe, because she was just looked like she's doing just n natural as she can be, you know, given the story, you know, you're talking to a mouse. How would you react to a talking mouse? You know, oh, hi, hello. You know, you'd, you know, because you wouldn't be afraid, I guess. You'd be more amazed at, look, yeah. it's a talking, not a talking mouse, I'm sorry, uh, a signing mouse. Because he would sign and he would have a, a card and everything. Sure. Yeah, no, good it's good sure. stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, um, was there any other standout characters to me? I would have to say Colin, Colin's character. Uh, Colin jo uh, Joe's from... Uh, SNL. Yeah, I love that. Uh, yeah, I, I really enjoyed his character because I know they tried to make him look like the douchebag protagonist, or or at least you know a side protagonist, but he was actually just funny and and not necessarily uh, a douche. He was just airheaded, like a little like not like he wasn't listening, like he wasn't really there, but he was there and he, he served was, his purpose. He was naturally funny. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, he was almost um, Ryan Reynoldsing, Ryan Reynoldsing, Ryan yeah. Reynoldsing his way to the movie through the movie, which was uh, enjoyable as hell. I didn't mind it at all. Wouldn't say wasted character, but homie from uh, Deadpool two, uh, yeah. stash homie, uh, who uh, spoiler alert doesn't make it. Or do oh no, he does. He does make it. He does make it, and he's told to go and leave and. And then he doesn't make, you know what, depending on what version you watch. Anyway, um, yeah, man. Character-wise, uh, humans, like, uh, they're all serviceable characters. But the ones that stood out to me, I think, and I think maybe I have, I'm a, I have a bias because I really enjoy them in other, um, yeah, like you like other, like other roles. Three, so, like seeing them regardless. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's almost like I'm watching my friend on TV. Yeah, they don't know who I am. But, so, you know, consciously, I know, like, I enjoy them. So uh, to see them in, in any kind of role is really just fun. Um, but but that's the only guy I was just like, oh, what do you, you know, let, let him get a little more more room. But he was playing the straight guy, you know, in the whole movie of all things. I mean, he had a really good stuff. He had a really good funny line in the, <clears throat> in the, in the sting at the end. Spoiler alert. There's a sting, guys. Don't want to give anything away, but it's means it's good it's your way yeah you just yeah yeah after the credits you just wait you all just wait man I just wait. i'm not setting up no universe but it's some funny stuff i don't even know if i wanted to call it a criticism because of uh i guess the major thing or uh thing that's said about the movie is the amount of time that's actually given to tom and jerry and while i will say that i think they got enough time but I only feel that way because I also, like I said, I'm looking at this through the lens of there were humans involved. So this is a movie about, you know, about some humans with Tom and Jerry, you know, involved. So mm -hmm. well, I will say that if I were, and with, if I were to go strictly by the title of this Tom and Jerry, I would agree that it wasn't a lot of time, but I think when you have to just sort of, give in and then just say hey this is a movie about humans mm -hmm. and therefore the amount of time that was given to tom and jerry was probably enough it is what it is the movie is what it is it's a it's a uh i wouldn't say by the numbers but very uh 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 it, it's a sandwich this movie is a, is a nice sandwich you get <clears throat> you know your nice Subway sandwich, they lay it out for you. They put your meat and but it's not, you know, whatever choice it is. And it's not usually enough for you. But you say, you know what, let me go ham with everything else. So you're going to get all the vegetables so you can fill up your sandwich. That's what this movie is. Yeah. It has, mm. it has Tom and Jerry in it. But uh, it's not enough. Fill up the sandwich with more. And that's where you get your love story. You get your rags to riches story. 
your growing oh, up story. You get your dunce and checks in your, I think you, you, you we, I'm sorry. You, you talked to me earlier about it. You say if it had a, rat, a ratatouille vibe, which well, they yes, very much had a ratatouille vibe uh, so, with, uh, with Pena. Yeah. Very much thinks, yeah. You, you, you little evil man, you, which I, I did enjoy the character. Good movie overall, though. Yeah, I, I, I was thoroughly entertained. Let's say that there was some uh, singing, rapping, and singing pigeons, uh, which I thought was cool. It, you know, it, it definitely wasn't uh, uh, Hercules and the and and the, and the singer, the, the the singing group on the on the vases or the vases. And it wasn't necessarily uh, a Morgan Freeman narrated film. But it did have the pigeons that kind of just weaved the story together. Yeah, yeah they. Like, uh, you, you, you didn't need a hand stitch this movie, but he did. Like I said, yeah. it was his 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 artistic way, and it was it was nice. It was nice. I liked Tim's story. Quick tangent, quick tangent, because I want to say Ooh, that run it, run it. Some some others others may criticize the the pigeons by saying. What's the point of having a character that explains to you the thing that literally just happened? Well, some mm -hmm. of us, maybe not me, but some of us, maybe me, we occasionally, for, unex for unexplained reasons, uh, space out, and sometimes we literally miss a minute or two of a movie and literally miss the thing that literally just happened. And then when you have the, these kind of things or these kind of characters that explain the thing that literally just happened while I guess mm -hmm. I see how some would be bothered. Some of us are secretly glad that that character is there. And it's nice. Cause it's like, you know, it'd be songs fitting to the situation. You know yeah, what I mean? So, you know, if I wouldn't gonna, just be unnecessary, I'm go ahead and, um, you know, and, and, and give my take on, on that uh, style and or character and or thing that happens in movies occasionally. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily mind it. I mean, if you sing to me, it's usually it's usually nice. So, you know. Yeah, right. Why am I gonna hate? So basically, this movie is Chloe Grace Moretz. She's in New York. She's doing this laundry service on a bicycle. Runs into Tom, who's having a tizzy with Jerry, and. Instantly, that's that's when I knew uh, the movie was going to be good because you're already getting your physical comedy. Yeah, it's the cartoon characters, but you're getting your physical comedy. You're getting the tone of the film. You're getting to meet the basically, in my eyes, the main character at the moment. And and that's from that's when I knew I was going to enjoy the film, Chewy. That's when I knew this is going to be somewhat enjoyable. Um. Now, was it the pigeons first before we get to Tom and Jerry? Yeah, it was the pigeons because yeah, the pigeons. Yeah, so up. so that, that when I got the, the pigeons, I was a little like, huh. Let me see where this goes. But once you get introduced to the main character, um, that's when I'm just like, okay, I'm gonna enjoy this. And uh, through and through, the movie is not so not so bad, not 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 too disappointing. Um, you know, do I wish there was a little more? Tom and Jerry? Yes. Yes, I do. I wish there was a little more Tom and Jerry. Um, and I guess, you know what? I also wish there was a little more a little more screen time for some of the characters, like Colin. I wish he had a little more screen time because he was yeah. actually really funny. I think the movie could have uh, added a little more, taken maybe slightly a, a little less time with the, the wedding stuff. And maybe add more time with Jerry and Tom and maybe, uh, <clears throat> you know, not necessarily more chasing each other around, but like becoming friends. Maybe, you know, not just, oh, you guys have to be friends now because the plot wants you to be friends. It's like, no, you should have grew to like maybe they become not, ne not necessarily best friends, but tolerate each other. Yeah. So you can see like, oh, maybe they that's why they can work together together in the end of a film um uh you know uh did i like the soundtrack chewy it was okay it was okay i'll say it was okay because that it, i wasn't bothered by it but i also didn't think it'd be so r&b heavy 
I mean, yeah, you you, you get the you get the hip hop, uh, which is great in the beginning, and then it becomes very R and B centric. I would like you know ask kind of, not that I don't like R and B. Believe me, I'll get down to R and B anytime. But I expected a little more, like uh, how do I say, Danny Elfman style orchestra, less, um, less. Uh, what's the word? Uh, copywritten music yeah yeah well, what, okay i mean sure a lot of great movies have copywritten music pulp fiction like, but still like when it's like an updated version it was very up to date yes yes it was definitely this generation's tom and jerry it could have been a little less this generation's tom and jerry and maybe could have maybe try to give us a timeless film but you know her iphone 10 12 whatever she was holding might not look too cool five years from now if oh, anything's yeah. gonna look like Don't a relic. Date this film. Yeah, there you go. Carbon dation, carbon dation, carbon dating. Um, which should be called carbon dation. Basically, my take on all these humans is just that I think uh, there was too many. There was too many. There was too many humans. There were too many characters to keep up with. I think there was way it's too almost... many. And for that reason, I think they try mm-hmm. to sprinkle in like a little bit of someone, or, like every single one, like. Instead of trying to give everyone a mini arc or just sort of like, you know, even sh- like you didn't have to showcase all, all, all the employees at this hotel. All you <laughs> need is just the few characters and the ones that you should so- showcase, which I did it, which I thought they did well was I thought they showcased the cartoon characters. Well, they had mm-hmm. the, uh, the alley cats uh, that came. Yeah. Back. So that would I mean that was fun. They had, you had your, um, your droopy cameo. Oh, the, the two cartoon characters, the cartoon characters that was done extremely well. I think as far as the humans, there was too many. Um, mm-hmm. I think that, you know, what can I say? New York cliche. Um, and I think, yeah. every, and I think I'd be honest, and I think while uh, Will Smith's Will Smith's character saved it in that, uh, what's that movie called? Um, with uh, in New York with um. Ava and uh, oh oh the ba- uh, not the bachelor the uh, um, touch touch yeah yeah, yeah. No, not the, like, it's nothing it's nothing the why you know like why hitch why hitch, the, the hitch. couple of the characters why they always have to be so hitch. rich that nobody can relate that's why I think Jost uh, Jost was just funny enough that he made that he was relatable uh, but yeah they, they, they were just too rich. I'm not gonna complain about not enough Tom and Jerry because, like I said, this movie is a rom com and Tom and Jerry were mm-hmm. in it. I think the parts that they had were enough. Uh, mm-hmm. But who knew? Maybe I don't know if this was always the case, but Jerry is a jerk. Yeah, he. he yeah, he he's a he's a he he's a, a thieving... keyboard to somebody. He owes Tom a new keyboard. He uh, he, Bro, up his he owes hustle. Tom keyboard recognition, all of it. Like yeah, he. He got a, he, he made him lose his job. He, he took his job. Damn. But you know, uh, he does come around, which is nice. Yeah. Uh, you know, Tom and Jerry, they didn't speak, but you know, again, they didn't need to because I thought the mm-hmm. the Tom and Jerry that you did see was basically classic Tom and Jerry. The animation was great. Um, I thought that the it was still very much two dimension. It was very a two D drawing. On in the real world, but it had like a like like a three D uh, on the edges kind of built in, so like it kind of pops mm-hmm. in in you know on the screen. So I I very much like that. Uh, so all in all, I mean, while I do find that the plot was weak, and I understand that enough, Tom Jerry, I mm-hmm. am going to look past that and say that uh, again. The animated stuff, loved it. Uh, live action stuff, I could take it or leave it, but I'm also gonna mm-hmm. take it because uh, Jost is hilarious. Yeah, I I wish more Jost, and I, and I think it'd be okay. More Jost. Yeah. Tanya's character made me understand the, the little short um, uh, cook dude from Ratatouille. Cause yeah. Was- <laughs> He was like, no, they're the evil ones. And then, and then, yeah. Like, Pena's doing that. I was like, nah, nah, they are the evil ones. Mm-hmm. And I like how they uh, they come together like an X2 where they're just like, let's just work together. You know? Yeah. 
Final thoughts, Chewy, man. Oh, final thoughts. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, this movie doesn't rank high, but it doesn't rank low. I'll tell you that much. Um, I usually know when I'm going to grade this movie as soon as I watch it. Like, it's like within the first 10 seconds, you know, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm boom. I'm already gotten, you know, for this movie. But, um, this one was a little, it was tricky. I, I, I kind of played it by each scene. Like, oh, okay, is it going to, how, which way is it going to go? Is it going to pick up here? Is it going to pick up there? Is it going to turn into a murder mystery? Is it going to like, where am I going here? Is this going to be clue? You know, just another uh, point A to point B movie, but it was nothing like that. It was, it was made in Manhattan. Uh, Rom-com with your favorite childhood characters <laughs> who have been parodied, uh, you know, seven f times over. And it's, you know, it, it was just, it was a serviceable film from, from start to finish. Uh, but in the end, if I, when I, if I have to grade this movie, I'm going to grade it with, with um, a solid, a solid, solid B plus. I like it. I like it. I like it. Yeah. Um, I think my final thoughts on this movie is just that, you know, I'm going to just grade it for what it is. Uh, it has Tom and Jerry's name on it. Well, you mm -hmm. know, hey, it also had a Harley Quinn's name on it. Or it had Birds of Prey's name on it or whatever. What? The Harley Quinn and the Birds of Prey? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That also yeah. had uh, a name on there. That had a name featured. on there. Yeah. Anyway, guess. It is a Tom and Jerry named movie. Yes. Tom and Jerry are in it. They're not in it a long time. But again, I graded for what I came for. This movie to me was basically hilarious. Uh, what it needed to be. It entertained me. Mm -hmm. What can I say? The movie got made. So the movie got made. People got paid. It's, the test audience liked it, right? Yeah, the test audience liked it. Uh, a lot of people signed off and it got made. And yeah. I'm grading it for what it is. It's a, it's mm -hmm. a human movie and it's got little shorts with Tom and Jerry. So, what's your final grade, dude? Final grade, I'm going to grade this uh, a B. It is a strong B because, like you said, it is definitely not the best movie. Right. Uh, but it's definitely not the worst. This movie can definitely always be on in the background. I will always, yeah. uh, you know, I'm definitely down to put it on. Hey, put on Tom and Jerry and uh, let's yeah. play some, uh, a game of, uh, you know, Magic Commander. I've, I've honestly watched it. <laughs> I've honestly watched the movie three times already and it I it's not boring. I'll tell you that much. It's not boring. Solid B plus from me, dude. A solid B from you. You know what, Chewy? For the first episode back, I don't think that's so bad. At least we're not no writing D's and F's. And I don't think we've ever gotten that far. So we usually have good 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 things to say about good movies so yeah no they like hey, and hey. this is all thanks to hbo max which i think uh people should get on man yeah it's uh, people max not a sponsor but can be <laughs> it can be hbo max um lincoln the no i'm just kidding uh yeah i know like uh besides just you know hbo max it, it it has like all these movies coming out you got mortal Kombat, which we're gonna do you got uh judas and the black messiah which you're gonna get a tiny review on for me you're also gonna get a tiny review of a movie i just checked out last night oh man i'm telling you i didn't think i liked uh rami malik as a as an actor until last night because <laughs> i've not seen anything easy no i haven't seen uh, bohemian rhapsody i haven't watched mr robot sorry hipsters i'm, I'm just not there yet uh but rami malik those, make sure you comment and those are coming then yeah if yeah i'll watch things for you guys sorry on the hipster comments most of you guys i'm sorry um just kidding um you guys are adults um uh, I'm just jealous i think i'm in love know. i think i'm in love like i, I already loved um um Denzel Washington as an actor uh, and uh, um, Jared Leto, uh, especially uh, his work in, in um, Requiem for a Dream, which you guys will definitely get a review. Um, but it was just like them three, their 
in this movie, like, yeah, it was a simple movie. And yes, you'll get more in the review, but just, wow. Like I found love for these characters, uh, love for this, for that actor, Rami, uh, Mr. Malik. Uh, but yeah, if you guys, HBO Max is the way to go. It already has a bunch of cool stuff because they have, they own a bunch of WB uh, catalogs and, and uh, they got a lot of, uh cartoon network adult swim crunchy roll you you you're in the entertainment boom hbo max where you want to be dude but yes wait for those uh snippets of from me coming out that's uh the little things and judas and the black messiah which i'm gonna actually check out tonight after i go back to work chewy anything you want to say no love this movie uh we're gonna keep we're gonna actually we're going to bust out so much content. It's going to be great. So it is going to be a good time to uh, subscribe. Mm-hmm. And when we do that, make sure you like. Make sure you uh, was it like, share, subscribe. Do the whole bit. Like, share, subscribe, talk crap. I don't, you know, as long as it's in the comment section, you can thumb us up, thumb us down, thumb us left or right. You know, just it's thumb us, y'all. <laughs> uh, Chewy. Uh, real quick, I do want to say something about your shirt. You look like you have a really cool shirt on. What is that? I also oh, want to know, um, for all the movie nights out there, we will be having uh, merchandise coming up. No, 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 this no, no, is, no. Uh, the inaugural t-shirt. This is a movie night staff t-shirt. So, this uh, means I love you guys. Nights, uh, and I'm Scarlet you be, Witch, uh, y'all. You want to be the host, the staff, if you will? For your, you want to be a producer. Uh, movie night. Hit us up. Hit us up. Store is coming in the future. You want a custom size? Oh, you want a you want a 4X? You want a 5X? Guess what? You want to swim in your shirt? No problem. We got you. Bang bang. Yeah. They're coming. This is the first design, but there are multiple designs that are coming. Mm-hmm. I want I want that chewy. I want that in blue. Oh yeah, no, it's coming. But like blockbuster blue. Mm-hmm. Why different mm-hmm. shades? Well, or is anyone there? This is anyone is... there to get sued? <laughs> Oregon, Oregon's last dance. Uh, again, man, this has been TNC uh, first uh, episode back since like a couple months, I guess. Uh, COVID's uh, a real and it's a thing, and we're all doing our part to wash our hands and butts and and wear masks and underwear and you know. Do all that, guys. Just be and nice. To get vaccinated. Yeah, and if you want to shake hands, sure, man. Just wash them right after, like immediately, with acid, yeah. and then maybe cut your hands off and ship them off. Get them sanitized. Yeah. I'm just joking. Uh, but we love you guys. Uh, become a movie night. You guys are actually already movie nights. I don't know what I'm saying. Subscribe. But we love you guys. Subscribe, like, share with your friends, show your grandmas or your abuelitas. We love all the citas out there. Um, yeah, this has been T and C at, at the, the movies. movies.